Thank you, Colin. That was a very nice introduction. Uh, good afternoon to you all. It's my honor to be here because uh, when I was a, a fellow at the Schorenstein Center, this was one of the fixed points I had to get because all these luncheons really had been very impressive. I remember Wendy Seltzer talking, so that was really great. And uh, I'm not an academic. I'm more uh, from the practical side, so I'm very happy to have you guys from uh, Liberia here who are also practitioners, journalists, just as I was. What I would like to share with you are some of my thoughts, which are part of my, my research work, which I've been doing for the Insurance Center last year, um, as uh, Colin mentioned already, and of course, uh, which had an impact on the work I'm doing with my company. My company is called Blockform, and it's based in Berlin, Germany, and in Oslo, Norway. Uh, so you see it's uh, already a uh, inter-European global company, uh, but uh, to make it real global, we do have the most of our customers in the United States, so we are uh, really uh, experiencing what does it mean um, to be a global company, and I have to say, thanks to Skype and all these great uh, innovations, it's really possible to do also as a, as a small innovative company to be global. I see three big trends in the internet, um, and uh, we were talking uh, before this uh, luncheon a little with Amar, and he said that uh, recently you had uh, some real big experts on the future of the Internet. And uh, as I learned, there were some even apocalyptic views um, there. Um, uh, that's why I'm very happy to share very positive views. Because I'm, I think uh, I have been founding a newspaper which was only in the internet in Germany uh, in 2000. So I have been through all this uh, experience of hype, uh, of uh, visions that should happen tomorrow and uh, uh, wealth that pours down like warm rain to everybody who just has a good idea. Uh, and I have been also to the valley of uh, tears uh, when it uh, came down to reality. Um, but. Um, what I managed is to get this company, this newspaper, really through all these difficult situations, and we succeeded to be one of the most important uh, only online newspapers in Germany, which I can tell you is not uh, quite easy because there are many uh, out there in Germany doing that. But still, it proved to me that uh, if you have the right spirit, if you have the right ideas, you can survive. You can even create something new, and uh, that would be something I would like to encourage everybody of you, uh, even if you uh, don't see it uh, at the moment, uh, just to try it, just to do something, and uh, you always have a fair chance to be successful. From my experience, uh, when it comes to citizen journalism, I think participation is one of the big trends uh, in, in the Internet. Um, to talk about this here at the Bergman Center is uh, is uh, almost a little too uh, arrogant for me because there has been so much expertise and that this can happen, uh, I think, partly uh, is, is a result of the existence, of the sheer existence of this center. But yet, though, when I was in uh, the Schorenstein Center, I, ha I took a close look. What does it mean, citizen journalism? Um, it's, it's a... It's a uh, a word you can hear, you know, when a publisher says, how can I cut costs? The first thing he invents is citizen journalism. <laughs> or when you ask the YouTube kids, what are you doing? Then they'll say, it's citizen journalism. The bloggers are said to be citizen journalists. So I, I didn't meet anybody who really know what it is. Um, and therefore, I took a look and we uh, did some quite extensive research to uh, at about... 300 uh, websites worldwide who were dealing with environmental issues in particular. We choose the environmental issues because uh, uh, there is such a variety of things out there that you should focus on something to compare. And when we looked into it, uh, I, would, I would like to redefine, and that's again the point why it's nice to be at the Berkman Center because here you can redefine things. Uh, the word uh, of citizen journalism and rather speak of network publishing. Uh, I think a citizen, everybody is a citizen, and the biggest citizen was Citizen Kane, and uh, I don't know whether this is where we want to go. Uh, a journalist, not everybody is a journalist. I do not believe that by just claiming to be a journalist, you are a journalist. I think it's craftsmanship. I can tell you out of many, many years of experience, and you as professional journalists will know that. You have to learn it. You have to have several um, 
uh, framework uh, things that enables you to do that, like a legal protection, like money, sheer money. You, journalism without money doesn't work. It's also an experience out of 30 years uh, being in this business. So I don't think that the combination of citizen and journalism uh, brings us any further. And I, I'd rather like to talk about network publishing because what people are doing is much closer to what publishers have been doing than to journalists, which means they have a mission. Other than the YouTube kids, they say, we do have something we want to tell an audience. Uh, other than the, the, the sheer uh, dating platforms, they are not looking for girls, but for getting some message out and being understood and heard. So I think uh, this is a very, very uh, similar approach to traditional publishers. And um, I think also when it comes to how they run their business, they are not journalists in terms of here we are the journalists and here is the publisher. They have to look where does the money come from, how is our protection, what technology do we uh, use, how do we increase our reach. These are all publishers' questions. So I think that's where these folks uh, are to be found. And network publishing, I think, because all of them, if you look at them, the network is essential for their work. Um, I know that, um, or I, I think so, at least that uh, Jochai Benkler is now also teaching here, so I just can warmly recommend uh, his very thorough book, so to say. So if you really have two weeks uh, with this nice weather and not doing anything else, then you should read the book. But he, I think, developed very, very interesting thoughts how this, uh, about the wealth of networks. The second book I would strongly recommend, although it's a little heretic when you have uh, Benkler, uh, then I would uh, recommend another guy, uh, Cass Sunstein. I don't know whether you have ever come along with him. And he's, he's here as well? Okay, so then it's not heretic. Cass Sunstein, Infotopia. Uh, is his, uh, well, it's his latest book, um, and I, for me this was the best book I've read in all the time when I was here and in the Shorenstein Center, because uh, he on like 200 pages sums kind of up how these things are working and why they're working like this. You can then still disagree, but you get a really good uh, mental understanding uh, what can work and what cannot work. And if you want the 10 page version, all you need to do is read Ethan's blog, who has an unbelievable review of Infotopia. <laughs> That's so great. You only have an <laughs> since I got lucky enough to help Okay. <laughs> great. Um, when you look at network publishing, I think you can uh, identify four groups of network publishing which do something of the same, but still something which is quite different. I would like to divide these groups, and that's what we did when we did the research on these websites. In the first group, uh, citizens who do media-like projects or projects which are similar to traditional media. These are operations which have a long-term uh, perspective, which have some kind of basic infrastructure, and which have uh, some kind of collaboration between um, uh, citizens and journalists. Those we have been looking into, like, uh, that's why now it's a term to praise Ethan, because you can praise him like all the time, uh, is uh, big websites like uh, worldchanging.com, which is a sh pure environmental um, website, which is a non-profit. It's like treehugger.com, which is a, a full profit operation, which has been sold to um, Discovery Communication in June or July, which is uh, in, um, in in, uh, we have in Latin America, we have many of these media-like uh, operations close to the social movements. It's Atina Chile, for instance. It's Eco Portal in uh, Argentine. We do have them in Korea as the mother of all uh, citizen journalism, uh, Oh My News. We do have them in France with Agora Vox. We do have them in Germany with Reader's Edition. That's the project I'm running. This is you say, you know, there have been the newspapers, there have been the magazines, what have they been doing, and now let's just transform it to ordinary citizens doing that. The interesting thing there for us was that when we looked into it uh, worldwide, that there have been very, very many similarities uh, between the different projects, although they never 
they, they physically could never have been talking to each other, they did see things very similar. They were, were, although they were kind of committed to um, environmental issues, they were taking it very uh, seriously in trying to be neutral, in trying to be like a journalist to achieve some objectivity, not to just uh, post out their opinion. Um, so they, they uh, built up uh, restrictions to themselves, um, which is not uh, n the first thing you would think of when uh, ordinary people go out and do some publishing. They all had some infrastructure with check and balances on their on their topics. Uh, they all have some uh, uh, orientation. How can we increase our reach? Uh, they have some uh, some brand uh, uh, thinking about what they wanted to build. So I think it's very interesting that you can with these citizen. Uh, that that's what I would then call citizens as journalists, but not citizen journalists, but people who are in media-like uh, projects. The second uh, category I would like to define is um, activists. What we found is that there are that network publishing uh, really develops its strength at the point where people have a limited goal for publishing. Like, in, especially in the environmental uh, world, uh, ten years ago, if you have a, a if you want to change something or if you want to fight some crazy project or some. Uh, uh, pollution thing, then you had to really run uh, and try to get the attention of the local newspaper, of the local radio, of whatsoever. This is over. People go publish themselves uh, whenever they discover something and engage themselves to change uh, something significantly. So this kind of activist is the second category. We have found lots of them, uh, for instance, uh, in the US. Uh, where there is an initiative which is called Stop TXU. This uh, was a, an initiative where ordinary people just um, uh, started to publish against a huge uh, energy company uh, in order to stop them to build uh, uh, very, very dirty factories, and they succeeded. Uh, and they had a, a very smart combination of publishing, of lobbying, uh, and of, of interacting with uh, all other peoples. But the publishing was always their genuine part. They were not saying, we try to get an article or try to get uh, three minutes in, in the local radio. They said, we publish ourselves. We had the, the same in, um, in the UK. We found some examples where people um, were just uh, stopping uh, uh, building projects by just uh, publishing what's going on, where there is corruption, and so on and so forth. So activism, I think, is a very uh, uh, important part of this network publishing. The third category I would like to uh, define are the bloggers. Uh, so Ethan, of course, is uh, here again. Um, I personally think that the bloggers are much more different to the traditional media than everyone believes. And I have a strong vote for keeping out the bloggers of the traditional media. I do see a, a tendency right now that big uh, publishers say, yeah, let's just hire some bloggers. Or that they say, oh, we have a 65-year-old um, columnist who, whom we don't want to write in the paper anymore. Let's blog him. Um, and I don't like that. Because I think what we have seen is that the, the essential of the blogger is his freedom. And freedom, I think, is 100%. It's not 98%, it's not it's 100%. And freedom is very annoying. I had, I had big problems with bloggers myself, and um, they are really, they are really, they can be very nasty. But I think that's what they have to be. And the moment you integrate them into the traditional media, they lose that. I met some bloggers who are now doing blogging for Time Inc. Jesus Christ, I mean, they were just, just kind of marketing themselves, and and I think it's 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 killing this new, real new format. The interesting thing is, we made a survey on the bloggers. So we asked about 300 bloggers worldwide, what what is your self uh, esteem? What 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 do you think you are? And it was very very interesting. Only a very tiny minority of about 20 or so percent said we are journalists, but 80 percent, so the overwhelming majority said. We are uh, analysts, 
and commentators. So they defined themselves completely different from journalism. They, they would never come, and it was interesting. It was bloggers from Africa, from uh, Asia, from Europe, from everywhere. And they had, with some nuances, basically they said all the same. When we asked them, well, what's your relationship to the, with the traditional media? Uh, what is always a, a, a big fear among the traditional media that they say the bloggers kill us. A very, very tiny uh, minority, minority was saying, we are here to replace the media. An overwhelming majority said, we are here to complement the media. We do something the media does not do, so we do something different. And of course, uh, these, uh, these own descriptions uh, made clear to me that we should leave them the freedom, we should give it to them. They, but Ethan explained to you, friends from Amer Africa right now, that um, it's so easy to set up a blog, and I would encourage you to do the same. If you want to express your opinion, do it, but don't let you buy by any uh, traditional media. That's, uh, that's not good. The fourth category, following to uh, the citizen, uh, the, the media alike citizens, the activists and the bloggers, the fourth category I would define, which is a completely different one uh, in the big field of network publishing, is Wikipedia. I think that Wikipedia is one of the uh, most important uh, innovations uh, for me as a journalist. It's the most important innovation which uh, the internet has brought uh, into the into this business. Uh, I know that there is a lot of discussion about uh, Wikipedia, and I know there are lots of problems with Wikipedia, and I know that there are some interesting uh, alternatives like David Sanger's uh, Citizendium. I don't know whether you have uh, looked into that, which is a Wikipedia a like thing which tries to be uh, just have better writing because I think that's uh, Wikipedia's uh, uh, biggest weakness that this is not text it's just a collection of, of information and it's not a narrative there so I think uh, that that really can be an improvement but per se I think Wikipedia has brought something into journalism which we would uh, uh, call something like to be a clearinghouse for information which has not existed before and which now is also uh, highly respected uh, among uh, traditional journalists. When I met uh, in a good friend of mine in the Shorenstein Center, Dan Okrent, the former public editor of the New York Times, uh, a very, very well-respected journalist here in, in, in the U.S., and he was public editor at the New York Times, so he was the guy, the ombudsman, so to say. He had uh, to take up what the readers were saying and when the journalists weren't writing the right stuff, so he was the kind of intermediate in between them. And he told me that, like, four years ago, it was not uh, allowed for a journalist of the New York Times to even use Wikipedia as a source. It was not allowed. Before I left, a week before I left, I happily read an article in the New York Times uh, in the business section where one business guy quoted Wikipedia and then he added, yes, even uh, New York Times journalists uh, read Wikipedia. So I think this uh, tells a lot how much it is accepted. Uh, the special thing about Wikipedia, I think, is that they have developed um, a, a way of collaborative uh, working which no other um, internet uh, network publishing but also no other traditional uh, entity has developed to my uh, knowledge uh, we have seen some um, some attempts to to copy uh, wikipedia there was a, a big experiment at the los angeles times uh, uh, two years ago where they uh, started a wikitorial so they invited their readers to rewrite the, the editorial and it ended up uh, in pornography uh, after one hour where well, i have to say well, in 2005, even the traditional media should have known that there is pornography out there. So, um, <laughs> but when you watch, and we watch this disaster in our research a little, when you watch it, then you see it's not anarchy, which is the essential of Wikipedia. It's more a kind of very refined hierarchy. It's, uh, you cannot just post, some, you can post something, but you can, you will be immediately corrected. You have, a, you have a structure developed which really takes care of the quality. So I think this Wikipedia has, uh, has started to be something very, very new where I would recommend, other than for blogging, I think Wikipedia in the right way done is one of the most important models for institutions for uh, media, because that's what you can do, and where you really can involve uh, ordinary people in a proper way. 
So that's a brief um, category about uh, uh, the um, how I see this network publishing. Uh, I think you will be able to contribute a lot. I think participation, as what I described, is one of the things which really changes the Internet. Uh, I think the second and next important thing will be design. I think when you look at the Internet today, it looks like the cars in the beginning of the 20th century. You see everything, the steering wheel, you see everything. I mean, my space looks like a car like in, in 19. But over time, the cars have become all the same. You cannot tell whether uh, the brakes in a Mercedes are done by the same manufacturer as for Chrysler, or it's all the same. What is really this distinction and what makes the, the character of the cars is the design. That's the only thing which is different. And I think that when you look back into industries, everything starts uh, very chaotic, very unorganized, and at some point, a design gets into it uh, to, to structure things better. I think one of the big weaknesses um, when it comes to um, uh, the Internet as an information, information medium right now is that it's very, very hard to find something. You have very, very few editorial quality. Uh, YouTube is a great thing, but never you should never see YouTube as a medium. YouTube is a database. It's just a database. And a database is something completely different to a medium. And that's, to my understanding, one of the, the, uh, the second point where the traditional media will meet uh, with uh, the Internet. It's design. It's how you organize your content. It's very often more important to leave stuff away, uh, to explain it better, to integrate the things you have. You have video, you have text, you have interactive things, you have everything, and you have to find a way to make it uh, user-friendly so that people really understand how to do it. For many of, of to my understanding, for many of the, um, of all these community things which are around, I, not Facebook, Facebook for instance was one of those who immediately understood that design is the, the key thing. But MySpace, I, I have to be frank, I can't, I can't use that. It's just terrible. For me, it's terrible. It's, you, you, you get lost, you don't find, and it's just not a pleasure. And I think um, that this will be something which is changing, and that's where we are in right now also doing our uh, work. We are producing digital magazines. We just took the, the old traditional picture of a magazine and transformed it to the Internet. So that's uh, just a brief uh, video. That was a British uh, television uh, broadcasting about internet innovation, which praised us. So I have to play that. <laughs> So that's others about us. What we are doing, we are producing magazines where we have all these uh, uh, these advantages you have in a magazine, which are sometimes very traditional, but which are, I think, very wise to organize content and to use the the, the good things about the internet, like the combination of text and sound, the animation. I mean, this is. This is for young people, you never should forget. But you can flip through here. It's, it's, it's a different thing than television, and it's a different thing than, uh, than a magazine. It has a third dimension. You have here interactivity. You have here interactivity. That's, uh, again, for Ethan, uh, the global, it's uh, in uh, Dutch, so uh, I, even I don't understand it. It's like, uh, who of the stars is environmental friendly? So you have to can look whether it's is he good or uh, good or bad. What what would you guess? Good, good to environmental. Let's try. Yes, he is. So and then it describes what is his project, what is he doing, or Paris Hilton. 
good or bad? What do you think? Bad. Just in environmental aspect. <laughs> yes, so the shark. <laughs> You can do that again and again yeah. as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'd be very happy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so I think that this is, of course, it's funny, but I think it's important to be funny. You know, I, I, who says that content only has to be dull? I think that's the secret of media. That's why media have become strong. It's uh, here you can choose your products, get an information. Or here, that's something I like very much. It's just photos with an animation. And when you look at this animation, it just gets, you know, a third dimension. And this is the internet. That's, that can be only done by the internet. So we could go on for hours, I assume, I hope. We are doing with my company, we are doing this stuff for many publishers, but also for corporations, because I think when we are talking about participation, that's also one of the trends that corporations or interest groups will become their own publisher. It's not only single people, it will be themselves. And this will change the media landscape, I think, uh, quite significantly. So, try this. That's something we did for the New York Giants. You know, they don't need the traditional media. That's just an ad. Uh, they don't need the traditional media. They can be their own media. They have their own content. And I think, for instance, when it comes to sports, um, I think, Wendy, you had this great uh, experience. And I'm sure the sports organizations, they will get away from the media. They will be their own media. And they will kill everybody who goes into this. And Wendy can tell. So we did something with them, but it's not the NFL, so okay. But here again, it's a, it's a combination of a video and a text. It's emotional. It's more than just the, 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 the information. And this is something I like very much, because this is a, a memory where you have to guess how well you know your team and how well you know the enemy's team. And that's something which only the Internet can do. It's you, show, you say, now here... I'm a European, so that's wrong, you know, and that's wrong too, and that we keep doing it. So, some experts. We, we can help you with Yeah, that. please. Yeah. <laughs> He's the quarterback. <laughs> okay, so, do you know the quarterback here of the Eagles? And who is Little Shepherd? I don't know who Little Shepherd is. You see. So, however, the great thing of this is, you know, it's a playful thing, it's a combination of information and fun. And it's just, it's just nice. And this is the strength, to my understanding, of the Internet. It's not so much about just putting a video and replacing television. That's not interesting. But to create involvement of the readers, to, to really get them to do the same stuff. So we did, or we are in the process of doing some stuff also with, with Harvard right now. But there is one final thing I want to show you. What we did for a corporation, which is uh, confidential, that's why I, that's just saying demo, but it's an airline, it's a European airline um, based in the north of Europe, so you may guess who it is, but uh, howsoever, they had a very interesting question. They were saying, you know, we are based in no Finland, uh, Norway, Sweden, Denmark, so there was this huge, uh, this is a huge territory and they had 10,000 employees, and they said, we want to create a new uh, magazine for our employees. We want to interact with our employees, because they are here and there, and just to ship a, a printed paper is the, not reasonable. What can you do? So we created this interactive magazine, and we uh, encourage to get people involved to communicate. So you have here the possibility uh, to write a message to your friends, uh, let's say Wendy, where are you? Okay, Wendy. And then you can send it. And it's going out there, you know, like in the horizon. And now we will have a little time and find it. And I can tell you that the employees of this airline got crazy about that. They spent hours and then, <laughs> but then the management realized that they were spending hours and you know what they did? They didn't stop them. They all also started to throw in some planes. So it was really a playful communication 
Wendy, where are you? You see that? So, I mean, it creates just a different space, and it's such a different way, to my understanding, what a medium can do, um, that I think this will be the future for the, of the Internet. And I'm not at all pessimistic. I think uh, these are so many wonderful opportunities you have. On the one hand, you have people involving themselves and contributing, and on the other hand, you have a technology which is uh, more and more sophisticated and simple at the same time. So I would say from my experience, uh, there is no, uh, no reason at all to be uh, pessimistic. And if you have fun with this, just uh, do the same wherever you are, and then you will contribute to the further development of the Internet. And now I'm happy to discuss with you. Where? You or? One day it's going to hand up to Wendy, who, having been referred to so many times sure. in the, and used um, as a demonstration. So, yes, building, building on the comments that you were making about my run-in uh, with the NFL and sports teams embracing this as a way to, uh, to, to reach their audiences, uh, and also your comments that many of the sites out there aren't trying to be objective. Do you think that there's a problem, and is it a short-term or long-term problem, uh, as organizations decide they don't need the media to spread their message, they'll just do it themselves and start making it more difficult for the media, traditional objective journalists, uh, to gain access and comment on their work. Well, I think it's a big stretch. Uh, I think it's a big problem for societies, uh, and I think uh, it will, co that is what my feeling thing which changes most the business model of the television <coughs> media. It's not the bloggers. You know, the bloggers didn't take away nothing from the media. But this shift from not spending advertisement anymore, but doing it yourself and of course manipulating, that will be a threat for the media. When it comes to the cooperation, I have been here so many times at this great place that I am very positive because I've heard from the young people that they were saying they strongly believe that communities um, do have uh, the ability to, to correct themselves, to create some transparent, transparency within their own uh, thing. And I think this is what will happen. I think we will see much more watch blogs or whatsoever who are directly to the corporations and who will attract. We, we do have, for instance, in Germany, we have a big tabloid, the uh, Bild Zeitung. This is, um, I would say, this is if you would combine. Um, uh, Fox News and uh, what's very trashy, uh, you, uh, what's New York Post. New York, New York Post. Yeah, New York Post, yeah. That, that's, uh, and then <laughs> multiply it four times and you have uh, it's a very strong, biggest tabloid newspaper in, in Germany. Uh, very manipulative, uh, you know, they, they are a little right wing, not very much, but a little, so they would always manipulate in a very thin, on a thin line. What uh, started to exist three years ago was a, a watch blog that was called Build Blog. And there, a huge community started to correct every mistake mm. in this newspaper. And what happened was very funny. I, of course, I know the editor of this newspaper, and he, was, he got mad about this. You know, he said, how can I kill? You know, it's like the elephant with the fly. He can't trample them. He has to find a way to, to kill the more sophisticated. So they were collecting things, how to sue them and so on, but they didn't do it because they knew it's such a strong community, whatever they do, it will just increase the, the popularity. But what they did, they started to use this watch blog as an internal control thing. Like they were reading it carefully and they were then taking their journalists and saying, why did you do that? Why did you do this mistake? Why did you do this wrong? So it really had a direct positive effect. And I think that is what will happen uh, at that point. Oh, you want to back there? Oh, me. Um, this is gorgeous. Thank you. Um, I used to be a designer, so I really appreciate this. But um, I guess my question is kind of twofold in that um, you were taking a new media and putting an older one on. And so this seems to be a, a bit of a transitional technology. And the, the, the effects seem more spectacular than informative. They seem to be like a little bit of YouTube residing in the magazine. And I wonder where the participatory elements are in this structure for people to kind of communicate in the circulation of ideas. Well, um, first of all, I think everything in, in the internet is transition. 
that's part of the internet. No one of us does have the the result, and that how it will be. I think what we are working on now is to uh, enable people to do that themselves. Uh, I, I'm I'm an old school journalist, so to say. So I don't believe that you give the best thing you can give the people is to say, "Oh, you're so great, do it yourself." I think you should say, "You're so great," and now I will tell you what you need that other people really can get what you are saying. So this is this is pretty sophisticated, you know. This is it's not in terms of technology that too, but also in thinking. How do you do it? How you create it? What what is the communication process behind it? But what we are working now is uh, on a community platform. We do have, uh, as one of our products, a community where we want to combine the social media experience plus this design experience. I think um, that people will always more and more contribute, but you have, that's my understanding, you have to create a channel where they can uh, articulate themselves. I do not think that the future uh, of the internet will be Microsoft uh, swallowing Facebook. I mean, that may be the future of a corporate uh, something, but this is not. I don't want to be. I don't want to have my profile at Microsoft. That's for sure, uh, because I, I. I'm every day. I'm angry with Outlook, so I don't want that. <laughs> but what will happen is that many, many communities, niche communities, will uh, start to exist and use the tools of this community themselves. The magazines for me is more a brand, a brand which can be taken by a community which explains more than just the individual uh, position. On the one hand, I, I love what you're doing. It's incredibly beautiful. It's very, very stimulating. It's a really exciting new media. On the other hand, it makes me incredibly nervous. And what makes me nervous about it is that the trend that we've been following is a trend towards democratizing the tools. I was able to talk with my friends earlier today and sort of show off how quick and easy it is to publish with a blog where it's literally at the level of complexity of writing a movie. And while this ease of use has had both positive and negative um, implications, I would say that some of the writing it's enabled um, probably outweighs uh, the negative parts that have come out of it. In some ways, you're sort of raising the stakes of what's necessary to publish in a certain particular type of this media. This is not the sort of thing that the average citizen can come up with. This is the product of very sophisticated writers and designers and programmers and, and a few other people <coughs> working on it. And in many ways, it seems like a very clever response from the traditional media to the sort of democratizing layer of this new media. But I worry in some ways that this is sort of creating almost a new medium where the doors are shut to the amateurs. And, and I'm wondering, first of all, do, do you think that's true? And, and are you concerned at all about the sense in which you are literally building a medium, um, which is now in the midst of one of the most democratic mediums out there, substantially less democratic. Thank you for this uh, controversial question. It's always good to have you here. So um, <laughs> <laughs> um, you knew the dangers. And absolutely, sit next to you. absolutely. But I have an answer. <laughs> That's why I'm doing this thing here, Reader's Edition. Uh, this is a newspaper which is only done by the citizens. It's the most uh, simple thing you can have. And what I'm learning there is that people are, first of all, much more capable than you would think. They can do almost everything um, uh, a journalist can do, almost, I say. <laughs> but what I also see, that there is a lot of limitation for, for, for the ordinary people. And I'm not uh, thinking that you should say, open the doors and please, just do whatever you want, you are great. I think you should tell people, you want to express yourself, what you want to express yourself, what you want to say, how do you want to, one of the most problems we have, and that was one of the experiences we had with most of these network publishing things we were looking at, people were writing what they were thinking, they were interested in anything. I sometimes have been thinking I should rename this not reader's edition, but writer's edition. Because the ordinary people, you know, once they start to write, they it's, 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 it's craftsmanship to know 
how you have to write that people understand you. It's not like just write. But they, did, they didn't care at all. They said, wow, here is my name. I can write that. Great. And it's a lot of daily work to educate them, to tell them, stop here, change the story, do it like that, and so on and so forth, that you get understood. Um, so I strongly believe that you have to um, educate people, uh, that they become part of the medium, and then they will become part of any medium, I believe. When it comes to this technology, uh, yes, uh, it is very, uh, it's very sophisticated because we have to, uh, we, we are uh, not a non-profit organization, we have to earn our money. Um, but when you take this, for instance, we have now built the first part of the uh, Magwar community is called New Soundland, which is a music community, which we will do also with some support from uh, John Henry Klippinger, who is also well known here at this place. Um, and he knows everybody, so he took some of this uh, everybody to help us. So we have this music community, New Soundland, which will be a, a, a very basic community uh, which, <coughs> where you can share everything. But what we will do there as a second level what is what we call cover art. We are creating a tool which is like a digital magazine for every artist to create his own digital magazine. Because what happened with music is that uh, by losing uh, the, the distribution channel of the physical booklets, they are really reduced to the music and MySpace, two things where I say they don't uh, get along quite well. So we will enable them to create very, very nice um, booklets, digital magazines themselves. That will be a toolkit, pretty simple, but if they have the right videos, the right content, the right, uh, they, can, they will be able to make marvelous uh, products out of it. So, we, yes, we do have that in view. On the other hand, I have to say, to make a 3D animation or so, it is just professional. And I'm quite glad. There is one more book I have to recommend, uh, because this is something you can really disagree on. Uh, uh, Andrew Keen, The Cult of the Amateur. Um, <laughs> but if you, if you disagree on that book, I think some of the things he's saying are quite, uh, quite uh, valid, though. Um, that you do not do good to the people if you say, just pour in whatever you will and then it is working. You have to have some quality limits uh, to get people in. And I, I'm very confident that people can adapt a lot. Okay? Does this satisfy you even? <laughs> Silence does not constitute assent. <laughs> <laughs> Let me follow up on Ethan in a much more primitive way, if I may. What comes through to me on the one hand, on the other hand, is an authoritarian mold that's being imposed. And possibly, I'm sure it has to do with language. That when you say ordinary people, perhaps in German, it translates into a different way. But I think part of the excitement of the internet is that everybody's ordinary. And I think by making such a clear distinction, you get an audience perhaps not everyone here, but a lot of people having to take sides of having to say, I'm an ordinary citizen. You cannot impose that on me. And I think somewhere more in the style and the sound that you can soften some of what it is that you're doing, because in German is a very strict language. And I think it's that Germanic quality somewhat I hear coming through here that makes someone like me say, hey, I'm ordinary. I don't want somebody to tell me I'm ordinary and that I have to do X, Y, and Z to be considered a journalist blogger. So as I say, I don't think it's the act itself as much as the structure that is being given. It's an observation. It is the Germans or the journalists? <laughs> <laughs> I love Germans. So I think journalists and the power they've had to decide with the, the sword, I knight you, and you know what you're saying, and you guys don't. It's, it's at the base of the thing, too, and it's not just words, it's power. Talking about who's empowered to speak. Yeah, I, I would strongly agree on both, basically, but I don't think it's a German. First of all, I'm Austrian, so that's... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but no, no, that's... It's, it's, it's a friend of mine who is an Austrian journalist. He took his family now to Oxford for a, a 
a sabbatical and then we asked him why would you do that and then he said he wants his daughter to learn a second language so uh, UK uh, so that's about the relationship between Germans and Austrians we, we are definitely different but I think it's, it's really about journalism I think journalism has created uh, an arrogance um, and many of, of, of the of the New movements are a result of the arrogance. The arrogance, I don't think, is only is not only saying you are ordinary and I am better. Although they think they think like that. I have been journalist for many years, and hopefully I'm not so arrogant because now I'm in the internet. But Ethan brings me back again. So, but um, but journalists despite people. That was one of the reasons why I founded Reader's Edition. I can tell you why. Because when I ran Net Title, I said, well, we get so many valuable contributions from our readers. And I would pass them over to my journalist and say, wouldn't you follow that up? And they would rather spend another half day looking into the wire, you know, and, uh, and finding a story which is safe than following a, a hint of the reader. And that's why I said, okay, if you don't want to really integrate the stuff coming from the reader, we make a second edition. That's why it's named Reader's Edition. That's the history, which is only done by the readers. And then let's see what's interesting for the readers and not. So I think uh, this is, but uh, this is international. This, I think this is, in, in, when you look at political coverage here in the U.S. and how these journalists act, uh, they, they really uh, don't even care about their readers. Right. They, they're working in a, in, a, in a small circle with their sources uh, or whatsoever, they, they don't care about the reader. But um, what I'm still saying, I think you, you should get away from this arrogance, but I think it's it's taking readers more seriously when you say, hey, it takes something to write an article. It's not like you sit down at home at 10.30 with three beer uh, drinking and then write an article. You should, there is a structure, you should think about it, and so on and so forth. So, but that's I not about you. It's worked for me for years. <laughs> so, you know, it, over the course of an article, I usually don't have you know, yeah. all in advance. But. It's about the balance, I think. You know, to, to, to give them a helping hand and not being arrogant. I think it's a thin line. You, you are very right with your observation, but it's. I, I don't think you should just drop it completely. So, so there's this there's this um, split, and uh, you uh, also uh, the, the the sort of not hiring bloggers and staying free and staying unaffiliated. Where do you see? And you, you discussed a number of kind of uh, these new emerging oh my news style collaborations that you that you looked at. Where do you see the the professionals and the amateurs coming together, or how do you see them becoming less um, orthogonal and perhaps yeah. more complementary? Well, first, many of the bloggers are former journalists, so they must have learned their arrogance somewhere. <laughs> That's why the old journalists hate them so much, because they know exactly what makes them suffer most. So, uh, but when it comes to ordinary people, that's for me just a word not to have to say citizen journalist, because I want to get rid of them. So, uh, I think um, professional journalists and uh, uh, ordinary people should collaborate. They should really, the sh journalists should tell, should integrate people in their working process. Mm -hmm. Like the, the, the problem with Wikitoria that the Los Angeles Times was, they just took like a marketing gag. They said, wow, now let's, let's write the readers. And I could have told you, it never works. You just can't say everyone can write. We have big problems with readers' edition sometimes with people who are just crazy. There are crazy people out there. <laughs> <laughs> there are crazy people in here. Well, <laughs> it's true. So you have to, you have to, and, and they, they want to destroy, I, I don't believe in black and white, everybody is good or everybody is bad, I don't think, it's a little gray everywhere. So, and, and you must take care that, that, that the, your main goal to give those who are serious and who deliver quality and who want to improve their own quality, to give them a place. So you have to teach them, you, you have to show them what to do, you have to, the, the most important thing for us is to really tell people, and I had huge discussions with our people, to say, look, this is a long text, yes, but it's not an article. And for me, that's not arrogant. It's important to tell him because if he, and that was one of the problems, to my understanding, with another uh, project that failed, um, in, uh, which was run by Dan Gilmore here, uh, also familiar with the center in, in the Biosphere. They just let people write whatever they want, you know, and it's, of course, then no one wants to read it. I mean, uh, I'm, I met the other day with a magazine guy uh, who is in, in, a very uh, in a very special magazine publishing. They even do everything with 
mathematics. They know exactly what the readers were. I don't like this kind of journalism, but it's it's there is some wisdom there too, you know, that you have to know something about your reader that you can so I think those projects who will be successful uh, will be where journalists and um, uh, um, ordinary people collaborate. I would strongly recommend, for instance, when it comes to the New York Times, they get 1,000 letters to the editor every day. They publish 15. I ask Dan Ockren, so what happens to the 985? Well, they throw them away. And I think this is ridiculous, you know. I think, why don't they open up a Wikipedia of readers? Of the, I, I mean, that would be a great thing. And there is no reason to say, we throw that away. Silent I've ever seen this room. Um, not to harp on the same issue, but uh, you mentioned that you don't consider YouTube a media. You consider it. Sorry. Sorry. Um, you mentioned that you don't consider YouTube a media. You consider it a database. So where do you exactly draw the line? I think a medium is there when you have some uh, editorial layers uh, that make sure that not what everything gets in also gets out. To put it very simple. Uh, that can be a very a very small layer. That can be, but it's not sufficient to say you know you have this IP ruling that whenever there is something bad, just take it off. That's it. That's not media for me. Media is that there is some editorial will, so to say. Now that may be German, you know, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> you see where where people have to, where people who contribute know that there are some guidelines they have to observe in order to be published. So Wikipedia has guidelines of sorts? Yes. Does it become a media yes. then and not a database? Absolutely a medium. Because when you look at Wikipedia, uh, I mean, you, you never should co only compare Wikipedia with the New York Times or you're from where? From Italy? No, from Ukraine. Ukraine. So what's your main newspaper? In Ukraine now? Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I wouldn't even begin to be, try to guess what's name. But you, you have you, you you have some newspapers there, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. But that's For a few that, days. That, that's <laughs> that's maybe difficult to compare. But if you take the New York Times or the Economist or um, I don't know, the, I wouldn't compare Wikipedia to them. I would compare Wikipedia with your newspapers in Ukraine, with my local newspapers in Germany, with uh, the local newspapers in the U.S. And if you compare them, then you see the, the real value of Wikipedia. Because when we had uh, took a closer look on the uh, coverage on the uh, on this uh, uh, Virginia Tech uh, massacre, um, where Wikipedia really did the, an excellent job. And you know what? There were many many mistakes in the Chicago Tribune, in NBC, in the big media. But there was no mistake uh, in, uh, in, the, in, the, in Wikipedia. So I think if you compare that with the, with the local media, they achieve a lot of quality. But if you're using that as a threshold, then uh, YouTube has even less, less mistake because it's uh, document, you know. But you have no context. Maybe, a, maybe sort of a useful intervention here would be to bring in some of the language that's being proposed by our colleagues over at MIT. Um, who are starting a project that they call uh, the Center for Future Civic Media. And just so that we have more competing terms in this space, <laughs> they are trying to uh, talk about civic media, which they define as very, very different from citizen media or citizen journalism or uh, network publishing. But one of the interesting pieces of the definition that Henry Jenkins offered is that it's not just a technology, it's a technology with a community of use around it and a practice of use around it. And I guess what I would say is with YouTube, there are many, many, many different practices of use around it, right? There, there's a whole YouTube phenomenon of posting a video and posting a response video. Uh, and that's become a very, very interesting sort of cultural phenomenon, but that's a tiny fraction of YouTube. A lot of YouTube is just TV content that's been slapped up there. Some of it is activist content. There, there's no clear community of use for it. <coughs> Wikipedia, I would argue, is very much a medium in as much as, yes, it's a tool, a wiki, but a very, very clear community of use with quite a rule set and, and quite a well-established practice. You can spend days arguing with Wikipedians about what's exactly the right and proper thing to do because they've spent days and weeks working it out. Where I might push back a little bit on you is that I don't think 
I, I think you're over-defining blogs. Um, a statement you, you made earlier that most bloggers are former journalists is just wrong. Um, there's 70 million plus bloggers out there. Uh, I don't think there are that many former journalists in the world. <laughs> well, if, you take, if you take citizen journalism... Yeah, I disagree just looking at my own community. Um, just looking at the community of 150 people that I work with on a regular basis, I'd say about 20 to 30 percent of them have a journalistic background. And particularly when you look at the larger set of blogs that we point to, maybe the 5,000 that we point to regularly, it probably drops to about 10 percent. Um, I was saying to this group earlier today, that blogs are paper. Um, it, you know, you can write a diary on a piece of paper, or you can write a newspaper on right. a piece of paper. They're incredibly broad. I think you're talking about a very specific, narrow group of blogs, which are blogs that sort of consider themselves to be in that media space and media sphere. But I worry in some ways that by using the term blog, which covers this, this vast range of me writing about my cute cat, you know, all the way up to the Huffington Post, that um, you, you may undercut some of your own conclusions about it because it is such a broad category. No, I agree on that. Uh, I agree on that. Of course, I have to focus on those who are competing in the field of media, and you, of mm -hmm. course you're right that uh, not uh, that was just a provocation. Mm -hmm. um, all of them were journalists. Um, Consider me provoked. Yes. <laughs> Successful. So uh, I think it's uh, what I just wanted to say is that blogs and media is very different um, uh, because the, the blogger, and there I completely agree, every blogger, um, he, he he's not uh, responsible to anybody except to his community, and that's it. So he is. He is the medium, so to say, but he does not have any any stronger links. And therefore, I think this quality of an individual person uh, being everything which traditional media has been in the in the past, this is a new quality which I like. I mean, we have had that, uh, by the way, in the age of enlightenment uh, in Europe. We had the pamphleteers, as you may remember. They are always referred to. Uh, yeah, here, here, here. <laughs> okay, you said that. <laughs> um, but they kind of disappeared, you know. They they, they didn't uh, they didn't uh, follow up. They were absorbed by the media in some way. And I think uh, that because there is such a variety, and when it comes to global voices, the best example, I think you couldn't even do that with uh, with traditional media. You have to have these people as as individuals, and and that's great, and it's such a huge value which I want to see preserved. Any last questions? Um, the demo that you showed that sports team and you picked the different players, it yeah. suggested, I want a name for whatever that was, and it's almost like uh, a collision of gaming. Yeah, it's and a memory. A gaming interface. Memory. Okay, with editorial and a way to learn and teach that looks a little like gaming. So I'm kind of excited about how those things are coming together there, and I wondered, um, have we seen that elsewhere? I mean, is Wikipedia going to have a thing where you have to put the heads of the kings of England on different <laughs> Is that how we're going to learn things? It's very interesting to me, like, as a learning tool for a generation that this is their, their way of connecting to data. Yeah, and I tell you what, I met yesterday by coincidence with one of the executives of Time Inc., who is one of our customers, and they are watching that very closely, and he told me, I didn't know that, uh, I always... Uh, stop my children using that. He said that Nintendo is having this, you should know that, uh, Ethan, Y, E, E, this, this we, new, we, 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 we. Yes. and there he told me there is a news channel where you can go ar around the world uh, with, a, with a game, you know, and, and find the news. I haven't used it, I haven't brought it with me, so, uh, but that shows to me, one, if, if you want to be in journalism, you have to be very aware of what's going on there, because if people, if this is the way how people in the next generation inform themselves, then the media would be them well off to know that and to find a way to, to speak their language, so to say. And it's a much higher level of engagement Absolutely. of any participant yeah. than reading the paper, right. which apparently everybody under 18 doesn't want to do anymore anyway. Yeah. So. But I like this. Because I have a 12-year-old. This is yeah, for sure. <laughs> Yes, I'm just deeply concerned about the future of the media, I mean, relative to the kind of uh, fascinating technology we're seeing now. You being, I think, a former journalist, if I'm not mistaken, I mean, how do you see the media standing 
10 years, 15 years to come, not Africa. Let's look at the European media because we are a little bit far behind. What future, what's the prospect of the media with respect to these kind of emerging developments? Very good question, very good question. And it's indeed hard to answer it globally because every country is different. Just to talk about the US would be completely different than to talk about Germany. Germany, we, for instance, have a very, very strong um, a public radio and television. So in Germany, for the last 40 years, there was almost no market uh, in, in, in journalism because it was public radio and television. Um, I think uh, when it comes to the future, I think the society will definitely have to think what is the value of journalism to us? Because journalists cost money when it comes, for instance, to investigative reporting. It's just very expensive. And the advertisers will not be the ones to finance this in the future. So I think uh, you have to find models where this is done in another way. I think there are examples where this is already there, like NPR in the US, which is a non-profit organization. And I have a strong feeling that many of uh, the journalistic enterprises, the truly journalistic enterprises in the future, will have a strong non-profit uh, component. Um, because you just don't get the money from the market. On the other hand, uh, we are looking around now a little in terms of investigative journalism to do something here in the US. There are many foundations, for instance, who are eager to do something because they recognize this is important to our society. We need that. And the market does not give it to us because the advertising is dropping. So we need to create another business model. And I, I'm confident this is a value. And there will be uh, other models which will strongly go into the direction of nonprofit. Yes, just, just interacting with the internet and maybe you, you, you browsing and you came across the work of a blogger. Um, in the coming years, will you be able to identify the work of a blogger from the work of a true journalist? I think with the involving development. I, I think you don't have to wait uh, for the years to come. I think today you have some bloggers who are already doing a better or most more important job in their segment than some journalists. Uh, thinking of technology, for instance, uh, most of the information I get uh, about technology, I get through bloggers. So 10 years ago, you had computer magazines or whatsoever. This is completely democratized some, somehow. Uh, I think the journalists, the, I, I would say there will be a distinction between blogging and journalism not journalists. And journalism will be a collaborative effort to really go into the, uh, the investigative reporting issues which cannot be done by a single person out of various reasons. But other than that, uh, the one has a media platform, the journalist, the other has his own platform, Mr. Blogger. So maybe on those questions of the future, <clears throat> I can't think of a more fitting note on which to end. Um, and break up into smaller groups, but please join me in thanking Michael for a great presentation.